Welcome to my brand new Let's Play of Blasphemous, a game that you have not seen. This is the very first episode. <laughs> he looks a little bit pissed off that we defeated him so easily. Maybe on the next go around, he'll make it an actual challenge. You know, I really expected that you'd be able to ascend to that throne of ash, young man. So this is one of the extras, one of the other extras of besides DLC is that there are multiple uh, title screens. Also, I, I realized at this point that I had actually been doing the entire first playthrough as one of the unlockable skins. So for this new game plus, we're actually going to be using the default. Oops. You had been playing as slightly more saturated John Penitente the entire time? I know, it's incredible. <laughs> anyway, uh, so when you go into New Game Plus, you don't just go into New Game Plus, you ascend. Welcome to True Torment. Oh. Yeah, I know, we have to play the whole game again from the start. Yep, and there is a uh, a mandatory... 50% reduction in attack and 50% upgraded damage when playing on New Game Plus. Oh no. As in you your your attacks do half and you take double damage, I should say. And we get ourselves a brand new item. Hmm. I wonder what that you is. You have to make it fair to the enemies. Yeah. And just to mix things up a little bit, we'll be going with the original English track on this playthrough. All that Duolingo practice has been paying off. Because this is my guilt, I claim your grievous miracle. Make my chest hurt with regret. Fought your punishment and nail it deep. Shake my guilt once again. The punishment is actually because uh, we broke our streak. Lily was very upset at us. So, with the context, this is actually the birth of Mea Culpa that we're seeing. It's another of the, uh, the major, one of the first miracles. And that hand picking up the Mea Culpa in the next shot, it actually may not necessarily be the penitent one. Could be the, the predecessor, or someone else from the Brotherhood of Silent Sorrow. And thus, guilt. Repentance, mourning, and every pain of the soul of all kind were visibly and tangibly manifested everywhere and in all of us. In retrospect, kind of a bad move. Sometimes in the form of blessing and grace. Sometime in the form of punishment. Oh, hey, there's Tempiedad. Well, kick that thing's ass again. That's fine. Mm hmm. Cut all those guys down again, that's fine. Which we could not and will never be able to unravel was called the miracle. <laughs> I can only see the cool S because of you. <laughs> it's because of you that all of this has happened, you understand? We are here again. Perpetually drawing the cool S. Now hang on, that had to be our arms. Grabbing that sword. We're the only one wearing the less saturated armor. There is such a thing called a uniform. Everyone else is naked. Oh god, I'm hung over at the orgy again. This is far deadlier than any orgy I've been to. <laughs> and we've also turned off the tutorials, so uh, for some reason they, they play again, even on New Game Plus. Oh no, how could I cross uh, without knowing that the A button jumps? Oh no. I mean, hey, if you were a journalist that was trying to cover Cuphead... <laughs> With New Game Plus, uh, quests get reset, uh, except for any rewards that you pick up from them. So we still have our rosary beads, we still have our prayers, we have the relics. Uh, we can just, you know, equip Blood Perpetuated in Sand right now and go up to that, that upper area, which we haven't actually gone to yet. Because you remember, at the very start of the first video of this Let's Play, I told you to look out for those, those red particles. 
that is one of the platforms that you activate from uh, Blood Perpetuated in Sand. There really should be some kind of acronym for these. Can we just call it like BIPs? Activate your BIPs and then you can bip bop on up there. <laughs> yes. A little bit of joy. Whoa! How do you level up at that one? Now here's the other gimmick of New Game Plus. This is the Altar of Penitence. So every time that you go through New Game Plus, you get a mandatory, you know, 50% uh, uh, damage down and 50% health up. But you can also apply extra uh, punishments for rewards later on. In this playthrough, we're going to be doing the Penitence of the Unwavering Faith. Uh, it significantly decreases our uh, the damage of mea culpa. Uh, but it makes, uh, it makes prayer attacks slightly stronger, and it also causes fervor to regenerate. Oh. So now we are locked in. You can change the penitence if you want to, but the reward you get later for it, uh, you won't be able to get that if you change it mid-run. Mid Hell of an idle animation. I don't think you've ever stood still long enough for us to see that. Yeah, well, Warden of the Silent Sorrow is next. So uh, let's go have fun and beat him up. With your new mage build, you are essentially playing as the mage build. Yeah, pretty much. And Not uh, wrong. since we'll, we'll also be getting the rest of the prayers, the hearts, the, the rosaries, everything else that you can carry over to New Game Plus, we're going to be doing in this playthrough. Playthrough three will be very short. You know, maybe if you're nice and quiet this time, you can sneak by the boss. Now, unfortunately, the miracle, by which I mean the level designers, uh, have deemed it so that you must always fight the warden. Can I say it's going a little bit faster this time? Uh, it is, but also, we're not doing that much damage. I mean, relative to how, how much we've upgraded the mea culpa in, in our previous run, it's about the same as it was before, which should tell you how much damage yeah. reduction there is. Like it's, so it, it's, you know, the 50% damage down just for doing New Game Plus. And on top of that, there is another 25% because we took this path. You say that, but you made it look piss easy. So I think that what you were just saying is all bullshit. That hit stun was really, really satisfying. Oh I yeah. Say. Well done, sir. So on this first playthrough, I was kind of waffling as to how much of the story I'd show again. So sometimes I skip things and sometimes I don't. Uh, but in later recording sessions. By the way, you can grab the uh, that reward again, but because we already have Blood Perpetuated in Sand, it just gives you some extra tears. Regretful be the heart, penitent one. The anguish of the eldest brother has now come. To an end. I am Deo Gracias. Witness to and merit. Penitent one's like, I don't speak English. <laughs> I don't speak. My penance, as yours is silence. Oh, excuse me! Penitent one's like, I don't understand English. The cradle of affliction is what you see. I like Deo Gracias', Gracias English voice. It is mm -hmm. Not as much as the Spanish, but it's still pretty good. Uh, the, the English dub is, it, it is, uh, it, it, let's just say that it is a victim of this game's limited scope and budget, uh, for reasons we'll get into later. I can't wait to hear how Dio Gracias' voice actor plays Viridiana. <laughs> Gonna be a very different take on the character from the Spanish version. Yeah, J just for, for context, it took three whole swings just to get rid of that one enraged pilgrim with all the upgrades we have but hmm i don't know something down here it's very appropriate that the uh the, the down attack is called the weight of sin which uh given how many specific hidden areas are tied to that well i think it's appropriate i mean yeah basically 
foreshadowed your fall into the giant pile of ash at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. You need to throw that sword away. It's weighing you down. So who or what is in this cavern? Oh, please be a whole new dungeon. It's a new character. Hello there. Nice to meet you. The light that you bring blinds my eyes. As do you. Wow. Yeah. You got uh, you got the scoliosis there, buddy. About on par with what Redento has. My arms grew since the first creak of my crooked neck. The miracle named me the messenger of the Saita. Yeah. Hey, we've oh. heard of that before. This guy's a gamer. Pure melody. And Even worse, he's a musician. It has the power so he still has no job. <laughs> the hidden depths. I make two tears every time someone listens to my sight on Spotify. That which awaits. No, wait, sorry. I make point zero two tears every time someone listens to my sight on Spotify. Abandoned. Please listen to my sight on Spotify. Highs to my Patreon. Who will take me where the sight will be able to resonate in? All its grace. The Amana Cedars of the Miracle await you. Until then, Penitent One. I hope he doesn't need his fingers to play it. It looks like a wind instrument, but more like a bugle type of a thing. Yeah, it's it's brass, but it's it's kind of like wrapped around his left arm. It's wrapped around both of his arms. I Kind of a thing where I don't think he could play it even if he wanted to. You might need to help him with that. You're going to need to go halfway across the game world to find the holy stepladder of... Ruggenfeld. <laughs> yeah, I think I mentioned before that Quicksilver was uh, DLC as well. And uh, it was introduced the same time as New Game Plus. You remember the we gave that to Nasabiento? Yeah, no, you yes. eat it, and then you have, like, a very strange trip that you try to forget, but it embeds itself in your brain forever. A true fugue state awakening for the penitent one. Well, I mean, that that pretty much describes the entirety of this game, to be honest. Yeah. That's what you have to wonder about the penitent one himself. Oh, hi. Uh-oh. What are you doing here? Caught you finding that secret path, jackass. It is not possible. That which bears hundreds of years of oblivion has returned. It has returned. He's going to toot. Uh, dear Gracias, is there something you'd like to share with the rest of the class? I guess not, huh? Only when he has a scroll. Like, otherwise, he's not in a talking mood. He's busy recording right now. He gets really shy when he doesn't have his cue cards. Yeah, no, exactly. He likes to prepare things. He likes to script things out. And things are not going according to plan right now, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. He knows you just sequence broke. How do you feel about that? Uh, as a former speedrunner, I actually feel pretty good about that. <laughs> And this is where we got our very first prayer. Uh, but because we already picked that up in our earlier playthrough, you get, I think it's 500 Tears of Atonement. Same with this. I don't remember what that item was. Change that goes in the tithing box is what that is. Mm -hmm. You again. There is no answer to our plea. The miracle has forsaken us. And my ornate throne turns its back on those who wait here. You know, it, I guess it's kind of making more sense now. A little bit, now that we have context. A little bit. Context is critical. Honestly, I'm just surprised that we can hear him through the mask. It should come out all muffled like this in the first couple of cutscenes, if you know what I mean. Uh, thankfully, the sound design was not supervised by Christopher Nolan. Ah, you know, they like fluted the mask so that it had holes for him to breathe through while he was gestating in there or whatever he's doing. Yeah. I guess he's doing the Quado thing, isn't he? Nobody cared who I was. 
And, uh, yeah, we're, we're actually going to go to Hondo first. Now, this is something that's uh, kind of a disadvantage of, of playing with this particular penitence, uh, which is that uh, it, it, re it results in a lot of this uh, because we can, you know, regenerate our fervor, particularly at this stage of the game because I got into the final boss the first time so underleveled. Uh, I, I do either speed up or cut most of this, you know, this cheesing, I guess, of the battle system, but uh, it, it will eventually become more entertaining to watch. No, that's pretty entertaining <laughs> after that montage. I gotta say, that looks real fun, man. This game looks real fun in New Game Plus. Sorry, I meant infuriating. That's oh, what I meant it's, to say. It's so easy to mix up those two words, isn't it? Yeah, when you like play enough Souls Likes, it breaks your brain to the point where you think that kind of a thing is fun. So, how many times did you stomp on your testicles before playing New Game Plus Blasphemous? More than zero. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. Like, sometimes you just trip over your own nuts while you're, you know, trying to do a Let's Play of a game. You're like, ah, I played on super ultra hard mode on accident. What are the upsides of this? It, it is, by the way, just barely possible to make that jump I tried to clear. I don't think you're intended to, but you can do it. Uh, most speedrunners don't even bother, or they use a particular... There's a particular flying glitch, which we may or may not see in playthrough number three. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to be showing off speedrunning tactics uh, for the next playthrough. Learn how to shine spark. Uh, it's, it's a very, very slow shine spark, actually. Oh, it's like that, that scene from Braid where you ride on a cloud for 20 minutes just to get a puzzle piece. 20 minutes? That's That's what what talking about like, like two or three hours. Yeah, that's generous. Oh, hi, Perpetua. Oh, hey. Hey, you. So I'm going to show off what uh, that, you know, you do get that one chance to beat her. Uh, but I wanted to see if I could at least uh, kill her in this state because my my health is uh, is very low. And that actually does affect the both the power of our prayers and also our attack. The lower your health is, the weaker your sword and your prayers. Gotta keep yourself in good condition. Yeah, I haven't even, you know, touched on all of the crazy shit that this particular path does to your to your playthrough. It's pretty cool that we get to see all of these locations again, though. That burned tree there, you know, mm. now that we know the plot relevance of all of these places. Well, this is a different tree. This is actually tied to a, a different site. Uh, it actually kind of looks like a nest when you look at it. I guess I'll just go fuck myself. The story of this game is incomprehensible to me, but I am enjoying the ride. Oh, penitent one. We traverse strange roads under the same firmament. With no the same firmament as last time, that is. Name. My name is Redento. I'm not as much of a fan of Redento's English voice. Uh, he sounds like 20 or 30 years too young. I affront in my not looking at thy visage. For we, at each moment, lean forth so as not to divert our eyes from the path. Such is our old precept. We are before Hondo, the great buried bell, erected upside down so that it's ring. Please don't say erected. Please say it in Spanish if you must. Distant lands. He only wishes he was standing erect. <laughs> well, I mean, when you when you get to this age, you know, one in three men. That's all I'm saying. He needs that little blue ball of wax, if you know what I mean. Ah. Destination. <laughs> oh, my sins. Who could help me? Best of luck with that, bud. I have a habit of abandoning side quests halfway through. Or are you not going to do that this time around? Oh, no. We're doing all the side quests. What? Yeah. With one very sp specific exception, uh, which I'm going to say for playthrough three. But I might actually be able to follow the playthrough this time. Holy yeah. shit. We're going to actually see characters more than once. Yeah. And it's in English. You're spoiling us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the bell's going to actually ring this time. Yeah. Unfortunately, but because of the of all the various things that are reset, uh, one of them is the uh, the bones. Uh, we're we're gonna go to the bone library once we've collected every bone. Uh, 
Because there, there are bones that you can't collect until you get certain items. That's kind of brutal that you have to collect the bones all in one go. Why do they reset? Uh, because fuck you, that's why, <laughs> I guess. No, that's actually what I expected you to say, too, is, like, <laughs> the game is just throwing up the middle finger, like, do all these platforming challenges again. I want to be the guy style. Yeah, you may also notice that our uh, health and fervor bars have also been reset. You have to do all that again, and I have no idea what happened there. I have not been able to recreate it, and it's never happened before. I assume it has something to do with, like, collision uh, with the wall over there. And here, like, you can clearly see how, uh, you know, how much weaker we are on this playthrough. Mm-hmm. Is there a reason that you've decided to go to Hondo first? Um, there, there is. Um, mostly just for variety's sake. Makes sense. Yeah, I gotta go to uh, where all of trees wither first on our third playthrough, for example. But I think most of that's gonna be off screen. Well, we were talking on the earliest parts of the playthrough that you can go to these areas in any order because they're all open to you as long as you know how to do the wall jump. That's pretty cool of a way to solve that puzzle. Yeah, I, I like that. I want to say that was intentional, but I'd be lying. Also, this is pretty cool. I really like how that turned out. I mean, you kind of just finished the guy off. He was like hanging on in the middle by a thread and you just like, boink, and then he just fell apart. And because we already have Toronto to my sister, uh, you know, that means that, uh, you know, the winged heads are pretty much, you know, completely invalidated. This time we're going to pick up Toronto to my brother from the <laughs> airport in Ontario, and we're going to have to drive him for a little while. But you, you'll have right. to specify, is it, is it Pearson or Billy Bishop? <laughs> I'm too American. Speaking of new things, we have Echoes of Salt. We briefly saw this area at the at, at the part of our, our first playthrough, but we're actually going to go exploring this time. Hello. Oh, and it's your favorite enemy. Oh, there are far worse enemies than these guys. I guess they're not the ones that are covered in wax. No, that's the um, uh, the ghastly baroness. That was her name. That's those are they only show up in uh, in Our Lady of the Charred Visage and one other area. You know what? These things not nearly as ghastly. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're pretty well dressed. Now that we've seen the, the statues and the boss fight. Yeah, I gotta come back here later in the video. You took one look at that platforming challenge and you were yep, like, fuck that. I'm noping out. <laughs> this is a sound strategy. It, it is. Unfortunately, it doesn't make for very good Let's Play material, which is why I'm fast forwarding through it. But huh, look at those weird flowers. We've seen those. Oh, yeah. I think we may be seeing someone here. Oh, hey, look. It's Ibriel again. How did he... I don't want to think about how he got here. It's best Same not to. Same way Redento uh... does, I guess. Yeah, it is best not to think about the machinations of the miracle. What are you talking about? He took the underground. one. The moment has arrived. It is your choice that I sound this bugle that weighs down. It is a bugle. I think it was Roy who said he wanted to know what a scientist sounds like. Well, we're about to hear it. Choice. Oh, good. I've also been posting uh, examples of the various music genres referenced in the thread. One from lungs these strong. I bet it'll be beautiful. The bell made music after all. Has already awoken, which is why the Saita is already resounding. It's all in the lips, bro! <laughs> so the Abanesidas are a series of bonus bosses that only show up in New Game Plus. 
and uh, you have to meet with Hibrael first. Jesus Christ! Yep. Those things are called, I think they're called dirt divers. Uh, they're called horrific nightmares. They're called binding of Isaac enemies. <laughs> what are they doing in this game? Oh, this got harder immediately. I can see why you didn't come here when you were a baby penitent one. Yep. Although, I, it, it's, I, I could have just used the Toronto there to, to hit that switch, but I don't know. I was... But doing it the hard way, or quote-unquote the intended way at least once, is like, it's worth doing, worth showing off. Yeah, exactly. And we we've, we saw those dirt divers uh, in, uh, in the uh, graveyard of the keeps. Or peaks, excuse me. We did, too, yeah. I might have been so horrified by them that I repressed the memory. Holy shit, you've got bile flasks now. Oh! Wow, well, that I, I in regards to those uh to those dirt divers, there actually is a a particular pattern I discovered d in, during this recording session. That uh, makes dealing with them a lot easier. Oh, I thought you were going to say like there's a pattern that like allows you to make friends with them. And then, like, there's an alternate path where you become a dirt diver. Like, Crash Bandicoot spinning into the dirt so that you can avoid <laughs> the lasers. I'm so glad that Roy is now able to get that reference. <laughs> Just watch, watch out for dudes with mallets. One, two, three, slide. Becomes almost rhythmic after a while. I love the way it explodes into giblets like a Doom enemy. Like, they just, they, when you defeat enemies in this game, whether you do a finishing move or not, they just fly apart. Yeah, this is also taking uh, taking longer than it should because my health was so low. <laughs> is that tight? Thank you. I'm glad that you have now preserved Roy's soul from leaving his body. His health has actually been preserved by your Gazundite. I'm more disappointed that none, nobody said these enemies are nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> oh, hey, here's a, a new rosary bead. I believe this allows us to parry attacks from behind. Ooh. Yep. Convenient. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it, it's fun to play around with it, but there's really only like a couple of a couple of different uses I could think of. What direction do you slide when you parry from behind? Do you go forward or direction you're facing or? That's a good question. I actually don't know. I'll have to test that out later. But that would only apply to like the heavy attacks where you can't repost them. Well, clearly getting hit in the back of the helmet is not a problem for this guy because he could just like drill them. You know what I mean? Like yeah. someone swings at him and he blocks it with like the with the drill bit. Speaking of which, when are we gonna unlock that move that allows us to like psycho crusher enemies with our drill bit? Oh, that'd be great. Because that Chrysanta lady did it to us with her sword. Yeah, kind of. Although there are there are some interesting things to say about Chrysanta's English voice acting, which was actually replaced at least once. Ooh. Because it was too good? Uh, sure, let's go with that. Awesome! I can't wait to hear it. You know, during our rematch, because clearly she's going to be pissed off at what you did the last time you met. Uh-huh. So, well, the... wait a minute. This is a new timeline. No one's going to remember what you did. But the penitent one will. a chance to not be a dick this time. Well... I mean, you're you're talking about making friends with the enemies, and in this universe, I think that making friends with the enemies is how what you do when you kill them, because you're you're releasing them from the world. You know, it is true. No longer being alive in this world does kind of seem like a benefit, doesn't it? Oh, thank God, penitent one. Phew. That temper tantrum I just showed off there. Um, actually, I'll talk about that in a second because I'm briefly showing off the other DLC area called Morning and Havoc. Uh, oh, we're going to visit that much later on in this playthrough. 
Uh, anyway, the, the temper tantrum I just I showed off uh, about 30 seconds ago, that is actually an exploit that speedrunners use to considerably increase the speed of the Penitent One's attacks. Uh, I don't like to use that. One, uh, for one thing, it's kind of difficult to do, but also it like completely destroys the difficulty of the game, and uh, it, it feels cheap. Now, you see, earlier on in a Let's Play, you talked about how sometimes you would end up attacking random walls, and it was actually supposed to be you searching for hidden rooms and chicken. Mm. Um, there was no hidden room in the bottom of that pit, my friend. Well, not yet, at least. I mean, we that we may be getting an item that will help us, because remember, we saw, like, there was a Child of Moonlight that we couldn't reach. There was another, another uh, collectible or two that, you know, went, went zipping past in an elevator. And we just weren't able to get. All right, so when you pick up Mary Poppins' umbrella, <laughs> I guess I'll be here for playthrough three when you can finally collect everything in this goddamn game. This, uh... What, are, you, what, what, what are they going to, like, have you suddenly start picking up artifacts from, like, I don't know, like the end of that Indiana Jones movie, the warehouse full of stuff? Oh, yeah. You face melt all the yeah. Nazis by opening the Ark of the Covenant at the end of the game. You have to go and talk to their top men. Their top men. Men. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Their top platforming challenges. Now, I think this rosary increases or, or shortens the cooldown time on uh, prayers. Yep, that's it. We also haven't really brought up the... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting the names. Uh, but the... Uh, the, the air juggling move uh, that we had to use. We had to hit those lanterns in a specific way. Uh, the, the actual, the input for that attack was changed uh, in a patch where originally you had to hold down and then hit X, but now it's just right trigger and X, which uh, makes it a, makes it much, much easier to use. Well, especially because he doesn't attack downward when you hold yeah. down, so it doesn't really make much sense anyway. Better to have it on a dedicated button. Or a de or it's still a combination of buttons, but it's easier to pull off. Better to have it on a dedicated combination yes. of buttons. Yeah, yes. right trigger plus X is a lot easier to do than down plus X while you're trying to move forward. Yeah, that's only when you're trying to catch Pokemon with a 100% success rate. When do you unlock that mini game? Uh, that's a blasphemous too. It better be, because <laughs> video games have bestiaries these days. It seems pretty easy to turn a bestiary into a fighting mini game. Like these guys would know dig. Yeah. And they would also know explode. You were you were joking about a double jump move. There actually is a double jump in Blasphemous Two. I believe it's called the Passage of Ash. Of course, it's got a name like a Halo ship. Yes. <laughs> It can't just be called double jump. <laughs> now, for some reason, I I thought like I had to like bounce off of the lantern here. Uh no! Turns out you actually just jump up to the platform. I felt like <laughs> such an idiot. You got fooled by the set dressing. Exactly. I don't blame you. I would have gotten stuck there too. I often forget that characters can mantle in games like this. Well, that's one out of 75. Gonna go pick up the rest of them now? Mm hmm And uh, let's go see Nascimento. He also has a pretty good voice in English. Voice says? Two faces greet you, penitent one. I'll be damned. My name is Nascimento. Look at my chest. I, I like, th this guy sounds more like 14. Whereas the Spanish voice sounds more like 19 or 20. Does not speak. That does not think. This is a better voice. Comes younger, such that I now look like a child. Such a terrible sentence is this that I do not understand. Although in this timeline, there isn't actually anybody growing out inside him. It's just a really awkward tattoo, and he got one night when he was drunk. The miracle is present. Even in those who to be fair, we all do things that we regret in our youth. I just wish he would stop trying to tweak his nurples while he's talking Ooh. to us. You think Quato over there is upset that he's being fiddled with? He's like, leave me alone. Quicksilver, we got more of that. 
even more of that. It's our second time collecting it. Uh, unfortunately, we had to start all over with uh, with this uh, with this quest. Uh, the same applies to like uh, the quest with Tirso, for example. That um, in that case, you start all over again. You can recollect the things, although you still keep the rewards we got from him. But you could do the quest again if you want for some extra tears. And if you want to feel like a good person and or are trying to complete the good ending of Blasphemous or something like yes. that. Yes. So you remember that that strange coffin where uh, the where Hibriel said that it was like like an Asimienda? Something yes. was hidden in there. Are we actually going to be opening the Ark of the Covenant? Well, we're going to try. Here's the thing. I spent about three hours trying to beat this boss. Uh... It's just, it just was not feasible, but damned if I don't try it, but we're, we're going to free Redento first, and then we're going to try our, uh, our numerous failed attempts to, to beat this lady, because, uh, she's tough. We will eventually be doing them all properly, like, much later on. Here's the thing. After that final boss, I don't see how the game could possibly get any harder. Oh, so you sweet summer child. <laughs> oh boy. Oh I can't wait boy. to see how small your hitbox really is in this game. It's the it's the penitent pixel. That's the nickname for his hitbox. <laughs> no, that's the last little bit of your life bar that you cling on to. It won't help you though. Not here. Speaking of not here, this isn't where we just were. Yeah, this is just like one screen off to the left. Uh, now, I've on some occasions I have seen glitch uh, glitch in this area where you can get the charging now to just infinitely run against the wall, uh, but it only seems to happen in my practice runs when I'm not recording. You know what? That Hondo bell—that's the sound it would make. Just dong, dong, dong. <laughs> it is pretty funny when it happens. <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> Listen, they can hear you. They just can't see you. They're like hermit crabs. They're very territorial, protective of their shell house. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you need all the supplies you can get, it seems. I like that you can run around the game world and pick up stuff that you already know is there early on if you want bile flasks and stuff. You know, just to prepare for the super bosses that will kick your ass at base health bar. Exactly. Well, I, I see, and I heard the dread with which you just said exactly, <laughs> too. Well, as of as of time of recording, is it because you this... chose to? Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Was well, it just because of the time at which you chose to fight these bosses in your playthrough, or will they just always be hard? Okay, I'm not sure what you just said there because uh, Discord cut out, but I'm I'm pretty sure whatever you said, I agree with. <laughs> so the bosses will just always be hard then. Uh, the, the new game plus exclusive bosses. I mean, this is meant to be like late game, even for the new game plus. This is, this is meant to be soul crushing. It's a good thing that we're doing it first then. Yeah. Well, actually it's not a good thing that we're doing it first. And I'm about to demonstrate why. <laughs> oh, this was such a terrible idea. That doesn't seem so bad. So first of oh all- Oh God, it's bad. Yeah, she has a shield that you have to break uh, first and foremost. And uh, she has a lot of a lot of homing attacks. Uh, a, lot of thing, a lot of things where uh, uh, that particular, where the things that she summoned that I thought were fireballs, but are actually axes. That was like, in my three hours trying to beat this boss, that was the one attack that I could not consistently get. Uh, although, uh, Tarata to my sister is actually pretty useful uh, because it has a much longer invincibility period than most of the other attacks in the game, or the prayers at least. So I noticed that when you take down the boss's shield, your sword does about, I don't know, one tenth of one of its 15 health bars? It has a single health bar. It's just very, very, very big. No, that's what each of those bars may as well be yeah. with the strength of your sword. 
I would imagine that this fight can go on anywhere from like five minutes to five hours. That that sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> oh, I meant depending on how quickly you lose it. This doesn't seem possible for a human being to do. So this boss also has one of the only one hit kill attacks. Uh, she tries to restore her shield. And if you and if you can't do enough damage to her while she's restoring it, uh, she then not only reforms the shield, but this happens. Oh! That is along with that. And I mean, spikes, obviously, and also like Expositos grab where, you know, he grabs you, rips you apart. That's like one of the few uh, one hit kills in the entire game. So it would make sense to have a DPS check in a new game plus boss. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so we're going to do those later. <laughs> Not yet. How come? Because, uh, uh, well, Fair. I, uh, I have about three hours of footage uh, that I haven't shown to explain why not. But <laughs> um, yeah, this, yeah is the, this is the start of New Game Plus. Uh, and we will uh, we will actually go and, and defeat some of the main bosses in the next video. It's wonderful how the game is combining new content with old areas and new areas with old content together. Yep, and uh, I could say right now that uh, the next video is almost an hour long, and they're going to stay in this uh, in in this range in terms of length. Feature length blasphemous, more or mm. less. Yeah, I love it. <laughs>